Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. The first three verses of the 73rd Psalm read, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou castest them down into destruction. The first sentence of this scripture might more properly be rendered, God is only good to Israel, meaning he is only good, nothing else but good to his own covenanted ones. He cannot act unjustly to them. His goodness to them is beyond dispute and without mixture. The phrase, even to such as are of a clean heart, defines the true Israel, not the ceremonially clean, but the really so, those who are clean in the inward parts, pure in the vital mainspring of action. To such he is and must be goodness itself. The writer does not doubt this, but lays it down as his firm conviction. It is well to make sure of what we do know, for this will be a good anchor to hold for us when we are washed over by those mysterious storms which arise from things which we do not understand. Whatever may or may not be the truth about mysterious and inscrutable things, there are certainties somewhere. Experience has placed some tangible facts within our grasp. Let us then cling to these, and they will prevent our being carried away by those hurricanes of infidelity, which still come like tornadoes, smite the four corners of our house, and threaten to overthrow it. O oh my God, however perplexed I may be, let me never think ill of you. If I cannot understand you, let me never cease to believe in you. It must be so. It cannot be otherwise. You are good to those whom you have made good. And where you have renewed the heart, you will not leave it to its enemies. The 73rd Psalm is a very striking record of the mental struggle which an eminently pious Jew underwent when he considered the respective conditions of the righteous and the wicked. Fresh from that conflict, he somewhat abruptly opens the psalm with a confident annunciation of the truth of which victory over doubt had now made him more and more intelligently sure than ever that God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Then he relates the almost fatal shock which his faith has received when he contrasted the prosperity of the wicked who, though they proudly condemned God and men, prospered in the world and increased in riches with his own condition who, though he had cleansed his heart and washed his hands in innocency, had been plagued all the day long and chastened every morning. Nor is he alone in his perplexity. His questioning only echoes Job's long-ago comforters and sets before us in stark language the bewilderment that has confounded the world's greatest philosophers through the centuries. The place where his doubts were removed and his tottering faith reestablished was a sanctuary of God. God himself was a teacher. What then did he teach? In the sanctuary, his mind entered the eternity where God dwells in a holy place. He left the things of sense for the things invisible. His heart gazed within the veil. He stood where the three times holy God stands. Thus he shifted his point of view, and apparent disorder resolved into harmony. And so he wrote, Then understood I therein. He had seen too little to be able to judge. A wider view changed his judgment. He saw with his mind's enlightened eye the future of the wicked, and his soul was in debate no longer as to the happiness of their condition. No envy gnaws now at his heart, but a holy horror, both in their impending doom and of their present guilt, fills his soul. He recoils from being dealt with in the same manner as the proud sinners, whom just now he regarded with admiration. Friends, our Lord chastens all whom he loves and scourges every son whom he receives. Don't despise it. One day we will look back upon it and see it was good for the soul and thank the Lord for the path down which he led us. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.